Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to class. Come on in, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I'll start by introducing myself for anybody new. Hello, I am Maggie, your substitute teacher today. Welcome into class. In my class, I teach you about the food substitutions that I've made on my health and wellness journey. I am a boy mom times two. I'm just like y'all. I've struggled with weight and uh, some health issues that are now corrected because uh, I've completely changed the way that I eat and the way that I snack. For me, that was a um, food sensitivity test. So that was a cheek swab on the inside and then some hair samples. So I have a list of foods that I can have and then a list of foods that I have to avoid. But all of the recipes that we do here on my channel, which is now turning into like a quick cooking demonstration channel, which I'm happy to do for you all. I love to cook <laughs> and I love to eat. So I need to make sure that I cook, um, you know, healthy for me and whether or not you just love to eat or you want some recipe ideas for the family or you have some health issues. I used to be pre-diabetic. I used to have elevated cholesterol and I used to have borderline blood pressure. All of that is normal now. I am maintaining a 77 pound weight loss with at least 25 more to go. You all are here to hold me accountable. I am your teacher. You are my scholars. The live chat is our study hall. So feel free to um, come and go as needed, pass notes, talk amongst yourselves. I, um, I eat twice a day and I only eat when I live stream for you all. So you are here to hold me accountable. Thank you so much for helping me age gracefully. Uh, let's take attendance. We'll get started. So Vel is here and present. Hello, Vel. We've got Carlton here. Thank you so much for being here. And Shafit, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to class. I'm going to be making shrimp scampi tonight. Um, I don't know why I picked this one. I've done it before, it's been a while. This is the Food Network recipe, Pioneer Woman. So this is shrimp scampi and she does hers over angel hair pasta. <laughs> I am sensitive to gluten, that came up in my test results. So as much as I love bread and starch and all of that, it doesn't love me back. So I'm gonna be making some substitutions. I found a new pasta substitute that I wanna try and it's pasta made with cauliflower flour. I've never tried it before, so I'm very excited. So I'm going to make the shrimp and then make the pasta. Hello, good evening. Uh, let me know if I'm saying your name right. Is it Aida or Ada? So help correct me, please. And welcome to class. Thank you for being here. So I'm going to make the cauliflower pasta for me. My son is still here. He's usually at his dad's, but uh, Mark is the swimmer. He's almost 15. Um, he gives raving reviews. Um, I will make regular pasta for him and we'll both have the shrimp and then the sorbet that I ordered for me. I'm going to let him try it too. So we got a couple packages that came in, a little bit of unboxing, and then we're going to get started. I have nothing on the counters. Y'all know this is not a real cooking show. This is just me in my kitchen, but you seem to like it and I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, we are growing our channel. Maggie, the substitute teacher, is only three months old. And y'all, last I checked, I was at 800 subscribers on YouTube. Amazing. Hello, Miss Globe Girl. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, when we get to 900, we're going to do the 100 watch or the 99 watch because my mom, Nana, who taught me how to cook before I had a choice, um, she said she would subscribe to my channel, but she wants to be number 1000. So we're going to be on 999 watch. Ada. Okay, Ada. I want to get your name right. Names are important to me. You all know that I am, um, a daughter of immigrants and, uh, <laughs> uh I married an American. I'm amicably divorced now, but, uh, I have an American last name, but, um, I was married at 25 and I'm 46 now. So I was, um, Margaret Apia uh, for a long time uh, before I got married and I know how it feels to have someone butcher your name so it's important to me to call you the way that you want to be called. Ah Shafit thank you so much. Oh thank you for the family subscribing. Y'all I always make these recipes with my substitutions, but I walk you through everything. A cookbook is coming because you do need a cookbook, um, but you guys can make these recipes with the full flavor ingredients. 
And I think it's amazing. You guys are starting to make some of these recipes and inbox me pictures. Feel free to post and tag. I love the community that we're building because you know what? We're going to eat every day, right? Might as well enjoy it. All right, so I got a couple packages at the door, so I'm going to go grab them. Hey, Veggie, thank you for being here. Welcome to class. I'm going to go grab the packages, and we'll do a little unboxing. Something arrived that you guys might want to see. You'll know what I mean. All right, so let me go grab our packages. Got a couple things and uh, y'all know I'm a boy mom times two. You've seen Alex. He is in boarding school, but be, he'll be home for the weekend. He goes to a military school. Um, and then my oldest is in high school. You'll see Marcus later tonight. They mysteriously appear when the food is ready. But if you guys ever want to do a cook along, I know we've got a lot going on with the Maggie merch, the Maggie meetup. Um, but I love the virtual cook alongs. And in case anyone is new here, a cook along is where we cook together side by side on screen. I've done three of them so far. I think they're a lot of fun. Um, so if there's anything that you want to make, you can send me the recipe or you can just let me know. I'll find a recipe. I will always do the substitute version. You can do the full flavor version and um, I'll drop the link and bring you on screen and then we can be side by side and we'll walk through each step. Uh, I've done it once with Lisa crab cakes. It was amazing. We did squash lasagna after that that was amazing and then the last one a couple weeks ago we did with Vel and Keisha we did the Maggie cakes with candy bacon it was so good but yeah if anybody's interested in you know setting up a little camera y'all know it's just me and my iPad but if you want to set up a little camera in your kitchen and cook with me um, and I definitely want to do a cook along with the kids we could do like I don't know make your own pizzas and some chocolate covered fruit or something like that it'd be fun Hello for me, Taro. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to class. All right. <gasps> this is not food. I know what it is. Ha 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 ha. I'll open it anyway. Y'all hold me accountable. I feel slightly guilty about all this shopping. Slightly. Um... I love body products. You know, gotta love the skin we're in. So this is from Lush. And um, they just have some like sustainable toothpastes, like these little um, toothpaste tabs. So you just bite down on it and then brush with a um, wet toothbrush. And then, ooh, it's already starting to soften. They have some body butters, look. I'm a believer in moisturization, right? So some fun stuff for me. But something else came. Dun, dun, dun. All right. So you guys know I'm setting up this Maggie merch store. I have been working on our logo. I know, you love Lush too? I don't know. They ended up in my... Um, social media feed, I think, probably because I'm buying stuff. And you know, the robots are always watching. But um, they have some body butters. This is so off topic, but body butters that are like solid. And then you just put them on your skin and they melt into your skin. Can't wait to try them. I tried some other brands that I love. Um, what was I saying? Oh, the Maggie merch. Maggie merch is coming, y'all. I'm building my little store. I had to change my logo because the first one was not approved. So I had to get one that is approved and we're tweaking it. We want to make sure it's perfect. So in case anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about, I'll just pull it up here while I turn the air down because I'm hot.
All right. So that in a slightly, just a few colors and a few little tweaks, we're going to get it perfect. But we have a new Maggie logo. So if you guys remember, <laughs> I'm usually wearing an apron when I'm cooking. And the one that I had on this morning, if you were with us for the chicken and waffles, was a white apron, which I love. Really good quality. But I think white is great for serving. But when you're cooking and actually, you know, cooking, it can get... Um, stains on it. It washes well, but Zazzle also has the apron in brown. So just in case anybody's new, this is the old logo. I thought it was cute, but I couldn't put this one in the store. So this is the white apron and then they have this brown one. So I'm going to be putting on the apron to see how the apron looks. I will need to reorder it with our new logo. Y'all, Maggie the Substitute Teacher is three months old, so we're growing together, and um, I'm just gonna take you guys along on my journey. Thank you for being here. All right, so you can see here, it looks like a nice, sturdy linen material, same like the other one. It's got a nice little adjustable neck. The first one that I usually wear is the standard size, and I bought the long today. I really like this length. So I'll put the other one over top so y'all can see. This is the one in the catalog that is the long. So it still has the uh, logo. I'll pull it up so y'all can see. It's kind of janky because I did it by hand. Not by hand, but I did it myself. I hired someone for the other one. But I'll show you guys the apron. So it's brown and it comes down to my knees, which is nice. The other one that I had, the standard one, and I'm 5'7", so I'm a little bit uh, above average height. So the white one, you see the difference? So this is the usual one that I wear, and I got the long. So you've got like a good four or five inches of fabric. So the white one, great <laughs> and um, this is the tan one Ooh, this one's a little bit different so this is the logo that I tried to make I tried to put my little um, you know Facebook and YouTube I'm just a cooker okay I do work in tech but I am not artistic I try I hired someone to do some uh, a really nice one so this is the um, I'm just gonna wear it because I ordered it but you can see really good quality uh, really sturdy and this one has two pockets I'll put it back on ties in the back like a you know standard apron the long one has two pockets so I like it I definitely like the fit so I will be probably ordering the long the um, standard one has three pockets I know it's dirty but you can see two on the side and one in the middle so that's the apron that's going to be in the Maggie merch store so it will be white brown thank you so much veggie um they do have a yellow one I'm probably not going to order the yellow one uh, but just so you guys can see so it'll be these two aprons with this image or something close to that working on a few little tweaks so exciting exciting got my apron on apron and pearls okay you did not ask for that I don't know why I did it but I get excited okay so I have one apron to wear and one apron to wash um, they're about twenty dollars but they always have some type of sale you know 10 15 20 percent off so, I don't know who wanted to see it. I think it was Maria. Maria, really, people wanted to see it. Hey, is it Q4? Thank you for coming to class. We're about to start cooking. All right, so I know I've got some seafood lovers here. So, I'm going to get all the ingredients out. This is not a proper cooking show where there's a team and everything is prepped. I do it all. 
<laughs> thank you so much. Crystal Light, thank you for being here. I love it. Crystal Light said, I make delicious food with a healthy twist. All of the pictures are on my YouTube community tab or on Instagram uh, or Facebook, I believe. Um, so then you can see what we made and decide if you want to watch the video. More dancing already, I know, and the food is not even here. But this is my happy place, y'all. I mean, I am a former corporate executive, very happy at home. And, um, you know, I've shared with you guys that I've always kind of struggled with weight and I never thought I could like the food and like how I look. Uh, I finally found something that works for me. So that's where my excitement comes from. Q4, I don't know if you're on the right channel. Q4 says, I want to see you throw down like a WWF wrestler. I don't think wrestlers wear pearls. Hmm. You might be on the wrong channel. <laughs> this channel is for those who love to eat or love to cook. All right, class, we are going to be making shrimp scampi. This is a pioneer woman recipe that I got off the Food Network. Like I said, I've made it before, but I'm going to do a couple substitutions now. I've made the full flavor version and it is excellent. All right, so it calls for two tablespoons of butter. So again, in case you're new here, my test results show that I am sensitive to cow dairy, so I can't have butter. Uh, well, I can. It just causes me inflammation and all kind of other problems. So my substitution is going to be goat's butter. I love this stuff. You can get it at Whole Foods or buy in bulk. Oh, <laughs> throwing down means cooking good. <laughs> okay, well, I'll let you be the judge of that, Q4. My class seems to like my cooking. Um, Amethyst has been here. Um, she likes the way that it tastes. You'll see how the kid likes it. Um, but I hope I make you proud. Leanne has a question about Brussels sprouts. Oh, sweetheart, I got a recipe for you. All right, so this is butter made from goat's milk. Yellow, just like butter. It's a lifesaver for me. Um, so Leanne wants to know the best way to do Brussels sprouts. If you eat bacon, like real bacon, Get the Brussels sprout. Well, first get the bacon lined out. I think I may have this uh, way back on my uh, Instagram. Bacon wrapped br Brussels scout. Bacon wrapped Brussels sprouts. It may work well with uh, beef bacon. We just did that. Or um, turkey bacon. You need that fat to kind of make it. If you have an air fryer, lay out your bacon strips. Sprinkle them with fresh cracked black pepper and then maple syrup. So you can just brush it on or you can pour it on. You can use full flavor syrup or you can use um, sugar-free syrup, but you want that nice ooey gooey. So pepper and syrup. And then literally, I wish I had like a tape measure, put your Brussels sprout at one end and roll it into the bacon and then put it on a baking sheet. So you have bacon wrapped Brussels sprouts, put them in the air fryer. You want to put it seam side down so the little flap is on the uh, baking sheet and that <laughs> Brussels sprout is going to cook in that. Um, after you roll them up, you may drizzle some more syrup and just crack some more pepper on them if you like a little bit of sweet heat. You have that nice crispy <laughs> melt in your mouth bacon and then the Brussels sprout. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. You got it? You're welcome, sweetheart. All right, two tablespoons butter. Now the recipe calls for two tablespoons of olive oil. Did my light just go down? Um, so y'all know that I have to use this coconut oil, so I like olive oil, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> so this is the oil that's been approved for me. If you can have olive oil, please have some for me. But this MCT oil, medium chain something, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I'm just a home cooker. But it's a coconut derivative. It's good. It's a mild flavor. The only thing I don't like about it, it has a low smoke point. So I would not recommend it for pan frying because it just, it just gets smoky. Hello, Secrets Beauty. Thank you so much for being here. Four cloves of garlic, minced or pressed. I think I have a garlic press somewhere. That's a fun little gadget. Let me see. I think I have some fresh garlic. Oh, 
Ah, oh, shucks, no fresh garlic. I have the jar stuff, so that's what I'll have to use. Oh, I was wrong. I mean, it's still in the refrigerator, but Leanne has me using these for our stuffed peppers. So I have whole garlic cloves. You can use the one that's already um, in the jar. Y'all know what I'm talking about, the one that's... I have this too. Look, I'm not the food police. This is just Walmart minced garlic. The only thing is when you're using the aromatic ingredients, aromatic just means they have the oils that release fragrance, you know, like lemon, like onion, like garlic. The oils are inside. And so when you cut them already, it just kind of releases. You don't get the full potency and we want that full potency. So this is going to be my garlic whole garlic cloves. Fresh would be best of best, but that's what I got. Half of a medium onion finely diced. I don't have an onion. I do have a shallot. Shallot is in the onion family. It's delicate. You guys have seen me fry uh, shallots for like a salad topping. Just uh, slice them really thin on the mandolin, pan fry them in a little bit of oil. They crisp up nicely, kind of like my substitute for those French's fried onions without the batter. Excellent. If you look back, I had a couple shrimp salads a week or two ago. If you scroll back, you'll see the fried shallots. So that's going to be my onion. One pound peeled and deveined large shrimp. <laughs> I'm coming, Leanne. So this came in this morning's delivery. The recipe calls for large. I got extra large. Uh, I think I put large on the um, shopping list. These came from Walmart this morning, but one of the things I like about the grocery delivery, if they don't have the specific item that you ask for, they'll try and find the closest thing to it and Walmart will match the price. So if the extra large shrimp is more expensive, they'll give it to me for the price of the large. And with shrimp, you know, the size is just, how big the shrimp are. Um, okay, so I was looking for fresh. Whenever you have any meat, steak, especially seafood, if it hasn't been frozen, um, you know, you lose a little bit when it has to thaw out, but we're going to make the most of it. What I'm going to do, if you guys can see here, it looks like this was previously frozen, so it's got a little bit of liquid in there. Excuse me, two things. I'm going to go ahead and drain it, and I'm going to let it sit out. Excuse me. Anytime you're cooking meat, um, especially something you want to sear, like fish or a steak, you want to try and get it to room temperature or at least not straight from the fridge into the pan. Um, the muscle fibers will seize up and that's how your meat is tough. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in a colander and let them drain. Um, and I'll cook the pasta first and then we'll do the shrimp. They said this recipe takes 15 minutes, but you know the way I run, run my mouth. We'll be here all night. No, we won't. So Leanne says, so funny. Tucker is grilling steaks and asparagus. Y'all, that is... I still have condemnous um, asparagus um, from last night. So I will put that on the side. Thank you for reminding me. I'll get that out. So Tucker is grilling steak and asparagus. Thank you for the hearts. And you're doing baked potatoes. And he asked you to do Brussels sprouts. He said, ask Maggie. Oh, she'll tell you the most delicious way. <laughs> oh, the most delicious. That reminds me of Mary Poppins. Just a spoonful of sugar. Okay, that's me. Uh, Veggie, what are you laughing at me about? Let me get my strainer. Mary Poppins is in the most delightful way, not the most delicious way. Just a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. <gasps> Y'all, sound the alarm. Look who's here. Man, I'm always in trouble. Mom has joined the chat. Hello, Nana. Nana sees shrimp again. She won't taste again. Sorry. Y'all notice how my mom comes on, but every time I'm making shrimp, Nana is there. 
I am the Mary Poppins of food. A spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. I need a little umbrella. <laughs> okay, opening the shrimp. <laughs> ah, veggie, veggie. I'm coming. I'm the Mary Poppins of food, right? I'm so glad that you all enjoy it. This is my happy place and um, I've just been quietly doing what I'm doing ever since my mom, Nana, had me uh, cooking <laughs> before I had a choice. Maggie, in the kitchen. So, all right, so I just got a little colander here. I'm gonna pour the shrimp in. Um, they're refrigerated, but they're in kind of, you know, whatever they thawed out in. So I'm gonna leave these in the sink. Let them drain down. <laughs> All right, so let me see what we've got. So especially when you're cooking uh, meat, you want to, one, I'll show you guys the shrimp. One, get it... Um, I was going to say as less cold as possible, but then also you want to kind of get it as dry as possible. Um, so I'm going to let it sit here and drain down um, all that extra water, especially if you're pan frying, that's when you'll get like the splatter, which we don't want. But then also you want your seasoning and everything to adhere to the meat itself and not just kind of wash off. Even if you're doing the grilled asparagus like Leanne is doing, like we did on yesterday's video for Condemnia, um, when you oil it in salt and pepper and garlic powder, you want those seasonings to stick onto the meat. Yes, I did say forced child labor and Nana is here. Y'all remember my mom said, that's how I was raised, Maggie, in the kitchen. Yes, forced child labor. But I am so grateful for my upbringing because now I'm able to, I mean, I've been cooking forever, but um, yes, forced child labor. Maggie, if you can't cook for your children, who will cook for them? I'm 10, I don't know. <laughs> All right, let me wash my hands. I'm also a Scentsy Consultant. If you need home fragrance today, I'm washing with peachy and palm trees. Yes, there are no secrets here, but um, you know, that's just where we come from. You know, you need to be able to know. And look, mom taught, um, you know, my nuclear family, it's just uh, me, my mom and dad and my brother, so. My brother knows how to cook, and I'm a boy mom times two. I've taught both boys how to cook. Of course, they say it tastes better when I do it, but yes, they know their way around the kitchen as teenagers. All right, so what does Veggie say? Throwing down in the kitchen basically means I have put your best cooking skills together. Thank you, which is complimentary. It's similar to the saying, kiss or slap the cook. Okay, if I can vote, I want to kiss. I don't want to be slapped. Don't slap the cook. I know what you mean. I appreciate the compliment. All right, back to our recipe. Shrimp scampi. We got our shrimp. It's in the sink, in the colander, just draining. Uh, two lemons had. I love lemon and seafood. It's so bright. Oh, it's wonderful. So I keep my produce on the counter. So we've got two beautiful bright lemons here. So we'll cut those in half in a bit. I'm just getting everything together, y'all. I do everything in real time so you can see it and then um, we'll eat together. Ooh, one half cup of white wine. I'm so glad. That's next. Um, oh, I put it right here. So I got a nice Mother's Day package. It had some Pinot. Um, so I had some wine. I had one glass. I'm a lightweight. That's enough. So I have some wine here. That's another reason why I wanted to do uh, this recipe. Um, four dashes of hot sauce. She uses Tabasco. So let's see what we have for hot sauce. Ah, secrets. What do you love? <laughs> Uh, 
All right, so I'll let my scholars choose the hot sauce. This is what I have in the fridge, Louisiana hot sauce. But this is what I had in the pantry, the Cholula. This one is, um, I know, popular on the West Coast. It says imported from Mexico. So I don't know if anyone has a preference, Louisiana or Cholula. Ah, uh, thank you, Mona. Thank you so much. Yes, if you guys want to tip the teacher, or kiss the teacher, or slap the teacher. I don't know. Um, I do have a cash app. Completely optional. Mom, I am up to 820 subscribers. So y'all, I'm letting you know, my mom, even though she's here, has not yet subscribed. Nana said she will subscribe, but she wants to be number 1000. So I have to do the heavy lifting. And when we get into the 900s, we're going to be on Nana watch. Because <laughs> we're going to let her press that button. Oh, Mona's out shopping with the kids. Oh my gosh. And moderating. Oh my God. Put the kids channel in there. If you guys have a business or a YouTube channel, you know, I'm a student of lead attorney, so I definitely want to pay it forward. Um, please put your business or YouTube channel in the chat. We'll bring it up. You guys are here to support me. So I want to support you. Um, Miss Globe Girl, yep, you're from the Caribbean. I'm from West Africa. Y'all know we came to America when I was one, so I didn't have a choice. Um, Miss Globe Girl says, I'm from the Caribbean, so I understand the requirement to cook at a young age. <laughs> Gotta do it. All right, salt and ground black pepper. And eight ounces of angel hair pasta. Okay, so I don't think I have angel hair pasta. For Marcus, the kid is getting spaghetti. So... Angel hair is similar, but a much thinner noodle. Look, y'all always hear me say, use what you've got. Hi, him versus her. Use what you've got as far as ingredients. So I know it's supposed to be over a delicate angel hair pasta. Yeah. And then for me, because I can't have gluten, so I won't be eating pasta. I got a new substitution. I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to use. Oh, your seven-year-old is being a diva. Y'all, let me tell you, I order online. The last time I took these boys grocery shopping, that's another thing I don't talk about. I talk about my impulse buys. You got two boys fighting over the shopping cart, hopping up on it, running through the store like a mad person, getting me in the ankles. No, ma'am. No, sir. Mm -mm. Leanne made me think of this. We made asparagus yesterday. It was excellent. I will uh, warm these up on the side. This isn't going to be fresh, but we always need a veggie, veggie, veggie. Plus Nana said that my plates need to be colorful. I try to go for three colors on the plate as a minimum. Yes. So Mona's kids have got a um, YouTube channel. So veggie, veggie says number two. You want the Cholula hot sauce? This one right here? I've never used it before, I just bought it, so it's brand new, but if this is what you're asking for, Veggie, um, you guys get to choose your own adventure with Maggie. Choose your own meal. All right. You didn't ask for that, but I did it anyway. I saw this when I was shopping for our chicken this morning. If you guys saw the chicken and waffles, the brand is Kali Power. So I use chicken tenders, real chicken tenders, but instead of breading in flour, they're breaded in cauliflower. And uh, you guys can go back on the community tab or on my Instagram and see, I just put them in the air fryer. Excellent, nice crispy crust without the gluten in the starch. So I saw this, I love it. They said it was impossible. So I'm gonna be eating cauliflower linguine. I've never had this before. I'm gonna make the shrimp scampi. And so I always cook for the kids. I keep all the regular stuff in the house. I just can't eat it. So I'm going to make spaghetti for Marcus and I'm going to make cauliflower linguine for me. So we're both going to have the same shrimp, but just on a different bed of noodle. All right. So I'm very excited about that. Now it says half cup of grated Parmesan. Mmm.
All right. I am missing grated Parmesan, so I'm going to have to make a substitution for both of us. Y'all know the grated Parmesan is like the craft, the shaker, shakeable one with the green uh, label. It's fine, but a lot of the pre-shredded and pre-grated cheeses have extra ingredients in them to keep them from clumping together, like sawdust. It's fine. If you have it, use it. Um, I usually make my own, so I'm going to be shredding this manchego. This is a cheese that you can see comes off a cheese wheel. So this is a dry aged cheese from a city in Spain, and it's made from sheep's milk. I know it sounds weird, but I can't have cow dairy, so I have to use goat's cheese or plant-based um, creams. And uh, this actually has a really good, if you like that salty, um, firm flavor, manchego is my substitute. Um, and that's fine because I got to eat it. So grated is the one that's really, really fine, like dust. I may have to shred this. Shreds are the little stringy pieces, but that's what I'm going to use. Manchego. A lot of the cheeses that I use, goat's cheese, sheep's milk cheese. Um, we'll see what the kid thinks. I won't tell him, but, um, they are in a lot of our regular grocery stores, but you're not going to find them where your regular cheeses are. So like Walmart, you know how you go to the back where the dairy and milk and the craft cheese is? It's not going to be there. You'll need to come up towards the front where the deli is, like where they slice the boar's head stuff. That's where you'll find some of these specialty cheeses. Okay, Veggie Veggie says, yes, titanium. Thank you for coming to class. Got a channel sponsor in the house, so happy you're here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then minced fresh parsley for topping. I think I do have fresh parsley. If you don't have fresh parsley, that's fine. Use the shaker one. But when I do have it, it just gives you that nice pop of green. And I don't even know. Parsley, like I don't really taste anything. It's just like a garnish. But the recipe calls for it, so we're going to use it. All right, so we've got that. Now um, I'm going to start with the pasta. I'm going to make the spaghetti for Marcus, and I'm going to make the... Um, I'll just make his now. Don't laugh. I have my pasta boat from yesterday. This is what I seasoned uh, Condemnia's uh, asparagus in. And I have some olive oil still left and I don't want to waste. So this pasta boat is actually one of my gadgets that has a little top, I'll go get it. One of my as seen on TV things where you can cook pasta in the microwave. If you're a pasta snob, it's probably a sacrilege for you. For me, it's fine. I don't like all that boiling water. I get hot enough already. All right. So let me see. I have the top. There's more parts to it, but you know, I'm a sucker. Okay. Microwave pasta boat. I don't know if you can see the letters on there. Um, I'm a sucker for, you know, looking at infomercials and saying, I need that, even if I don't need it. So it has like this little top that goes on and you can cook pasta and drain pasta or just do it on the stove. Okay. So since I'm just cooking for um, me and the kid, I'm not going to make all. There's a way to measure this stuff. I just eyeball. Uh, when I do my cookbook, because a cookbook is coming, because we do need a cookbook, um, I'll do better about measurements, but Nana taught me to cook with all of my senses. So we'll do eh, a little bit more. The kid likes pasta. He eats everything. All right. So I just put some dry pasta in there. Hope that's enough. Um, it's got some oil already in there, salt and pepper and garlic powder. I know. Um, so I'll salt a little bit more 
And when you're salting pasta water, they say it's supposed to taste like the ocean. So you really want to salt liberally. I don't have to watch my sodium. I do have to watch sugar. Um, so if you have to watch sodium, I'm not a doctor. Please do, you know, what works for you. I'm just sharing what I do. Then I'm going to add the water. Okay, so I just have my water in here with a little bit of olive oil, the salt, and the pasta at the bottom. And then you cook it in the microwave for 18 minutes. And when it comes out, um, I let it sit for a little bit. Once it's that um, al dente, I like mine a little bit softer, but I know pasta is supposed to be firm. Um, you can put it in cool water to keep the uh, to stop it from cooking, and then toss it in a little bit of oil so that it doesn't clump together. Oh! Q4, you just told me something. This is to measure the pasta. Thank you so much. I was supposed to put the pasta through there. So I'm assu assuming one, <laughs> y'all, see how you helped me? I don't know everything. I'm figuring this out too, but that's good to know. <gasps> yes, titanium. Nana, did you see my count? Y'all, I'm in the 800s. How did that happen? Thank you, Q4. Thank you for the tip. Okay, let me get the microwave open. Open it before you carry this thing of water and uh, we'll see if it's not enough pasta for him. He's already had one bowl of cereal. I'm sure he can have more, but um, it should be a pretty good portion. Okay, that's all I use it for is to cook pasta. It can do a whole bunch of other stuff. And then you could put like the sauces and stuff in there, drain it, serve it. All right, but thank you Q4. I really appreciate that. Next time I'll actually measure it. Oh, Q4 says cow's milk is horrible for the human body. Look, a lot of us um, are sensitive. Um, you know, like I shared with you all, I had always carried extra weight and then uh, past 40, I'm 46. The weight problem started to turn into a health problem. Thankfully, all of that is normal now without any medication. But uh, when I went to get my food sensitivity test, the metabolic specialist, who Nancy may be watching, and uh, she's agreed for an interview, so you guys will see uh, who I see uh, one day soon. She took one look at me and she said, you know, you're not really big. You just have a lot of inflammation. And I had never heard that before because I had bought into the lie that I'm plus size, that I'm big bone, that I'm all of that. Um, when I got my test results, it was a lot of stuff that I eat all the time or was eating like chicken, coffee, dairy, citrus, gluten. And I was like, what the heck am I supposed to eat? And that's where the substitutions came in. So when I started my journey and I've been retested and a lot of things have fallen off, what remains for me is gluten dairy. Um, I can have coffee now. I can have chicken now, but I started substituting turkey instead of chicken, tea instead of coffee, almond milk instead of cow's milk. And a lot of the pain and inflammation and bloating and just all that stuff that I thought, oh, I'm just getting older and I got to take all these pain pills for a bad knee. It went away in 48 hours and I was shocked. I hadn't lost any weight yet, but the pain went away. So I always say that I eat this way to stay pain free and the weight just kind of comes off as a byproduct. All right. <laughs> okay. So we got our pasta cooking. All right. So let's get our ingredients portioned out. Two tablespoons of butter. The goat's butter comes in this big block. So I'm just going to eyeball two tablespoons. It's like two pats of butter. So we'll have everything ready to go. So I'm eyeballing it, just enough on the knife. So we'll call that two tablespoons. Um, two tablespoons of olive oil. So I'll just get a two tablespoons measure. Six 
So we'll get this ready when we use our coconut oil. That's gonna be my substitute. Four cloves of garlic minced. I think I have a garlic press. Another gadget. I buy all this stuff and it's like, when do you use it? You could do this by hand with a knife, but this is a garlic press. Literally, it's just a little device. You put the garlic clove in there and then you mash it through and it comes through the little holes. All right, so four of those. So let's go ahead and put those in. This part could be fun you could do with the kids. You know, they like to help with supervision. All right. Get a little spoon. We're gonna get four garlic cloves out. Come here, biggin. So I've got four garlic cloves and I'm just going to see if they go through my little masher. I don't know. So put one in. It's more like musher, but it works. So I'm just going to use a spoon and scrape it off in here and do the others. You just want, you know, garlic is one of those um, very fragrant, some would say pungent ingredients. I love it when cooked. Um, but you know, you just want it to release the oils. So making a little bit of a mushy mess, but it will be fine. If you don't have one of these, just use a little knife and cut it small. I'll show you guys what I have. I've got a little in here I need to scrape out. Again, if you have fresh, that would be best, but this is what I got. I always tell y'all, use what you have. I'm using the back of the spoon to get in here because I don't want to miss anything. All right. So it's not the best, but we have our little garlic. At least it's not four big balls. We have our garlic pressed. Half of a medium onion, finely diced. Okay. So I'm going to do this whole shallot, which is probably like half an onion. So I'm just going to do this by hand with a knife. Get a little cutting board. Wash the garlic off of my hands. So just like the onion family, you've got that papery skin on the shallot. Shallots to me are a milder flavor and they don't make me cry when I cut them. I was gonna say I could use my chopper, but it's fine. So I'm just cutting off the tips and then I'm gonna peel just like I would an onion, get the papery skin off. And just go around. This is why I can't, that's why I don't have uh, long nails. They just, I do too much with them, but I am happy. You gotta get in there. Get this skin off. I'm just gonna make a little slit and really get in there. All right, I had to take one layer off, but you can see here, so we have like a little purple oniony kind of thing. I'm gonna do the same with the other one. Cut off the tips. If you have more money than time, you can buy your veggies already uh, prepped and chopped. 
in the grocery store right next to the um, whole ones. They'll be in little containers. You can get onion, you can get peppers, you can get all that stuff um, already cut up if you don't like this part. All right, just cleaning my trash. All right, so it says medium onion finely diced. Oof. So finely just means small little chunks. So literally, I'm just going to go across and then crossways. You don't have to have amazing knife skills. Just keep your fingers out of the way and have good quality knives. Brandless, I think the links are in the description. These are under $10. They do the they do the job. You just want a good, you know, chef's knife. Keep it um, sharpened. So I just went through and I have rings. Then I'm just going to go back through them. Turn them, cut in half, cut in half, turn, cut in half again. Doesn't have to be perfect. Small diced, finely diced. We just want um, small be uh, small pieces that are going to blend well with the garlic. Then you can also use this rocking motion. Keep your hands out of the way. Shallots are diced. Could be onion. I'm using shallots. And I lost one. All right. Um, two lemons cut in half. I'll do that in a bit. Want to release it when I need to. Half a cup of white wine. Oh, we got half a cup. <laughs> I'll keep that next to the wine bottle. Four dashes of hot sauce. Veggie Veggie wants the Cholula, so we're going to try this one today. Salt and pepper, got it. Eight ounces of pasta. That one's still cooking. Let me take a look at my substitute. Again, if you just joined, I'm not having pasta. I'm having cauliflower pasta, cauliflower linguine. Oh, you're supposed to, oh. Hmm. Three minute pasta. Bring a large pot of water to a rolling boil. Add the pasta to the water. Stir to loosen and cook for three minutes. All right. Just because this is new, I will do this one on the stove. Whenever I try something new, I try to do the recipe per instructions, and then after that, I'll mess around with it. Ah, Leanne, what is the bowl trick to get the skin off of the garlic? Let me know. You smash it. Ah, and then fresh parsley minced for topping. So I'm just going to get a little bit of parsley. I'm not going to wash the whole thing. I'm only going to wash the part that I'm going to cut up. They say if you wash everything, it spoils more quickly. So separate the portion that you're actually going to use and wash this. So just rinse that. Oh, it does say a half cup of grated Parmesan. All right. I'll do the uh, manchego. I'll do that by hand. All right. So we've got our fresh parsley beautiful green. I'm just going to chop this up. For a topping, it's really just a garnish. So you just want to get it small. I'm just going to, oh, battery's running low. Sorry, I need to plug you up. Um, I'm just going to try and like twist it up and then small little cuts. Ooh. The, the, fla the smell of fresh parsley, it's like, a, like grass. If you like that outdoors kind of smell, when you cut into it, you know, it just releases the oils. And um, I think that's good enough. It probably could be better, but I'm not a big parsley fan, but I'm following the recipe. So Leanne says, pop the garlic. Pop the garlic, pop the garlic. I guess that means out of the, pop the garlic and put it in a bowl with the lid and shake hard. All the skin comes right off. You just did it. That's what you always do. Okay, remind me that next time 
Uh, I have fresh garlic. We'll see if we can shake the skin off. I've never tried that with garlic. Usually I smash it with the back of a knife, as in smash. Ah, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, you got it. Okay, last thing is the cheese. I have two blocks of uh, manchego, so I just want to see which one expires. Okay, October and November. All right, we'll use October. So I'm going to do this by hand with a little fine grater since it's supposed to be um, grated and not shredded. So we've got our onions and parsley. Pasta is doing its thing. All right, so let's open the manchego. Again, if you already have um, oh, my butter, sorry. If you already have uh, grated Parmesan, just sprinkle what you have. Use what you have. Just looking one more time, I try to pride myself on having all ingredients, but you can't have everything under the sun, so. I might have scissors. All right. So, a little etiquette lesson for you. I learned this in one of my classes, and yes, I do take etiquette and elegance training because I need it. Um, no, I just enjoy, you know, in my mind, I'm living this, um, I'm hosting these fancy dinner parties, wearing my pearls, twirling around in a cocktail dress, talking about the finer things in life, and then I have my rude awakening. But um, if you are eating off of a cheese board, since this comes from a cheese wheel and it's aged, is it from the outside in or the inside out? I don't know. But the most flavorful part of the cheese is the center. So you never want to scoop right out of the center. That is considered bad etiquette. You want to slice it from the edge and that's how you enjoy it. But you never cut off the center part of the cheese wheel. I didn't know that. I'm not a big cheese board person, but now you know. All right, so let's see. It says, Half a cup of grated Parmesan. Ah. So we've got the half cup. I'm just eyeballing. All right. So to follow the rule, if this is my cheese wedge, I'm not going to cut here. I'm going to cut here. Now the rind is edi edible but I'm going to cut that off. Sometimes they soak it in wine. Sometimes they, I don't know what this stuff is. They say it's edible. I just don't want this in my cheese. So I'm just going to cut that off. You can eat it like with crackers. I'll probably still eat it. I won't waste it. But they also say the ends of Parmesan or Manchego for me. If you're making any type of soups, or pastas, let's say you're making a pasta sauce that's going to simmer all day. You can just put this whole thing, the rind in the soup or the sauce. So I'm just cutting it off the edges and then it gives you that nice salty, cheesy flavor um, that, I mean, I'll eat it. Mm. Woo. Woo. Getting excited by itself, but for, for shredding, I just want no discoloration. All right, so let's get a little container to put it on. All right, also from Brandless, just a fine grater. This is the one that I use when we zest our lemons. So I'm just gonna go in here with the um, 
manchego for me could be parmesan for you but whatever dry salty cheese you like whatever you like um i'm just shredding this by hand this is when i need that thing that they have at olive garden right that crank thing so you guys can see i'm getting a nice little dusting of manchego so i'm just gonna shred this whole little wedge that i cut off may not need the whole thing but i'm gonna go ahead and shred it anyway it gives us that nice salty parmesan flavor Again, if you have the stuff in the container, just use that. Oh, it's beautiful. The way it just, do I have enough? The way it's like, like little snow. Dining is an experience for me. I love using all of my senses. How does it look? How does it smell? Of course, how does it taste? What does it feel like? Um, some people are just like, yeah, whatever, as long as I'm not hungry. It's oh, a little workout. All right, I think I got a half a cup. It was only about half of this, but I would put the kids to work on that. But we got a nice little dusting, y'all can see, of the manchego. All right, microwave is done. Let's see how that pasta looks. Wash my hands, got a little bit of cheese oil. And then I'll put my pasta water on the stove. No, I'm gonna make this shrimp. Cause seafood, you can, um, y'all know you can overcook it pretty easily. So I wanna focus when I'm doing fish or shrimp. Um, yes. Oh yes, absolutely. Come on over Leanne. Yeah, y'all can come over, absolutely. All right. So let me look at this little pasta boat so it was boiling in there i'm just kind of stirring it around with whatever this is okay and i look for color so you know i probably should texture is good i'll taste your food even though i don't eat pasta it's actually good um maybe just All right, I don't want to overdo it. I don't want it to be mushy. So here's what you do. I'm going to drain it, and then I'm going to replace this with cool water so you guys can see the pasta is in there. Done. Texture is good. Um, so, yeah, because I don't want it to be mushy. And that's how you can stop the cooking, with pasta, with eggs, with anything. So I'm putting this little contraption together. And I'm going to pour this in the sink. It's hot. Hold it here. I'm going to pour this in the sink and then just rinse it with cool water. Oh, you know what? I'm glad I said that. It says save some of the pasta water. I always mess that up because you want some of that starchy water. Reserve a cup or two of pasta water. So we'll just do two cups. Let me see if I can do this. In the sink. Okay. So I've got two cups of pasta water just in case I need it. It's got that nice starch in there. Now I'm going to drain. Hot. I don't know if that's enough pasta for the kid, but let me rinse it off. So we got our cool water in there. Good. All right. I think we have everything. Now we're ready. So let me clean my surface because I'm going to bring my, um, what's it called? Cooktop. Clean up. Clean up, clean up, clean up. Oh, there's the scissors I was looking for. All right. Good little snack, the end of the cheese. Mm. All right, let's get the cooktop.
completely optional. Link is in the description. I just use this here so I don't have to go back and forth. I will cook my um, cauliflower pasta over there, but that's just a boil. All right. And we're going to use the cast iron. Cooktop is great, but it doesn't work on all um, cookware. So I'm going to be using the cast iron, always nice and seasoned. Um, melt the butter and heat the olive oil in a large skillet over medium heat. All right. So turn it on. I'm going to go medium low because this thing gets hot fast. All right. Two tablespoons of butter-ish. Two tablespoons of olive oil. So we're letting this melt down. I'll show you guys what we have. It's nice to do the butter and the oil mixture. You get um, the flavor, the butter flavor gives it that nice like character. I don't know why, it's just good. Melt the butter and heat the olive oil in a large skillet over medium heat. Working on that. Ooh, and the butter is starting to melt and sizzle. Keep your eye on butter because butter can go from solid to liquid to foaming to sizzling to burnt pretty good, pretty quickly. That's good if you want to make toffee, but not if you want to make uh, shrimp scampi. Okay, so it looks like my butter is melted and I'm on medium low. So you guys can see there, we got our butter and our oil. Ah, smells good. Add the garlic and onions and cook until the onions are translucent. So we've got our garlic. I'm gonna put the minced garlic in here. Love that sound. And the onion. So I had shallots. All right. Oh, smells amazing. So we've got our onion and our shallot sizzling. Just going to stir it up. Okay, sorry. Um, add the, whew, let me turn it down. Cook two to three minutes until the onions are translucent. So that just means you want them to start to get like a little bit of a clear. You know, onions that are raw are kind of more white. And so you want to cook them down until they're not going to be all the way see-through, but they're going to start looking more clear than they are white. So I've got these cooking on a medium low, keeping an eye on it, cleaning up as I go. That's what Nana taught me. Clean as you cook. I'm going to keep an eye on this and stir. Color is starting to change. The garlic. Uh, Nana likes the veggies too. Mom, do you want some asparagus? If you want, Mom. I can bring you some tomorrow or um, have Dad bring you over. Nana lives about 20 minutes away. Or if you want me and Marcus to bring you some dinner tonight, I'll pack you a plate and I'll bring you some. So let me know. <laughs> Mona says, don't be a lurker. Y'all, I know my scholars and my scholars know me. I love it when y'all are here. I love the little community. Ah, pop me. I love the little community that we're building. But I know we have people who just like to watch. And you know what? You are welcome in my class. All right. So... I'm just doing this low and slow. I could go a little bit um, faster on the temperature, but like once you burn onion and garlic, it's a little hard to kind of recover from that. 
and this cooktop is um, new to me. Unlike a stove where you turn the dial and it starts at zero and you turn it up, this cooktop, it's got a touchpad from zero to 10 and it starts at five. So when you turn it on, it starts in the middle. So if you're not paying attention, you have to be mindful to turn it down. I think we're good now. I'm gonna show you guys. So if you remember those shallots had that purple color. Show you guys what I have. Smells amazing. So we've got our shallot and onion nicely softened. Let's see. Add the garlic and onion and cook until the onions are translucent two to three minutes. All right, I'm gonna refresh Marcus's pasta water because I don't want it to. Be too hot. Okay, add the shrimp, then stir and cook for a couple minutes. All right, so let's get our shrimp. We're using extra large shrimp. It's been draining in the sink. So this is our shrimp and it calls for a pound. So I could just dump the whole thing in there, but I really want to, oh, nice. The tails are on. That'll be pretty. Oh, no, they're not. I'm just placing them one at a time because I don't want to dump any extra moisture in there, the garlic and onion and, but I'll stir it up. Stir it up. Sorry, y'all. It's my happy place. Cooking is therapeutic for me. Um, and y'all know, even though Nana is here, my family doesn't believe that I'm cooking. She told my dad, oh, you know Maggie, she has a cooking show on YouTube. My dad says, oh, Maggie, she's not cooking, oh. She's just opening cans and boxes. So I grew up with the African Martha Stewart. Nana will stir stuff for hours, roasts her own grains, no, sifts her own grains, roasts her own nuts. I do work. I work from home. I work in tech, but I just, uh, I can't do it. Sorry, mom. All right, y'all. So we put our shrimp in. I'll show you what we have and I'm going to stir but I just place them into the skillet with the coconut oil or olive oil, garlic, onion or shallot, and butter, goat's butter for me. So stir and cook for a couple minutes. And shrimp doesn't taste long, taste. Shrimp does not take long at all. I'm on medium low because I want to keep an eye on it. Literally, when I flip them over, you're starting to see the pink. They go from that gray to the pink. Once they change color to that pink, and once they kind of curl up into themselves, your shrimp is good. I don't like to overcook seafood and it's like rubbery. Nah. So I'm just gonna stir this. I think that's good. I'm gonna let it do its thing. Uh, I love cooking shrimp when you get that texture right and it's like buttery soft. Oh, Miss Globe Girl, you hear me? Little darling, stir it up. Y'all, I've been to Jamaica five times. I love it. Love it. Okay, focus, Maggie. Show you guys what we have. Still gonna go a little longer. Turning it up one number. I was at two, I'm just putting it on three. Let's see what's next. Add the shrimp, then stir and cook for a couple minutes, done that. Oh, squeeze in the lemon juice. Two lemons worth of juice, okay. I didn't cut them. Let me go ahead and do that. And I have a little lemon squeezer, so this will be fun. Kids can help with this. Cut my lemon in half. 
If you have lemon, um, the, the yellow stuff, use what you have. I have a lemon squeezer. Completely optional, you can do it in your hand, just another gadget, like the garlic press. You put your lemon in here, the open side down, and when you press, you get the lemon juice, and it holds the seeds. So I'll show you guys what we have. Shrimp looks great. I'm just gonna add the lemon juice to it, which is great for seafood. All right, so shrimp is looking good to me, not overdone. Let's put some lemon on it. So it is lemon heavy. So this is what the lemon looks like when it comes out. I do not toss this. I'll put it in a pitcher of tea, hot tea, iced tea, and sip on it the whole day. So one half, one lemon, All right, I'll put these in a Ziploc bag and reuse them. Ah, Ooh. cut the other lemon. Squeeze into the shrimp. I'll show you guys what we have so far. It's giving me nice like foamy, citrusy, starting to like curdle, but it's give, getting some character from the citrus. So the other half, so we got one and a half lemon juice. And then the last one. So the juice of two whole lemons. Ha <laughs> ha The acid in the lemon is going to cook the shrimp even more. Thank you, Q4. All right. Wonderful, that's how they make uh, ceviche, right? With lime juice. All right, so. Let's get the knife out of the way. Stir a little bit. Add the wine, hot sauce, salt, and pepper. All right. So we've got our shrimp in here. I'll show you guys what we have. It looks beautiful. A nice pale pink, still tender to the touch, not overdone. So this is with the lemon juice. All right. I want to taste one. Um, add the wine. Half cup of white wine. They say cooking with wine is drinking it too. So this is going in, but I'm not going to drink. So we've got our white wine in there. And the hot sauce. All right. Cholula, veggie, veggie. This was your request. So this is a Latin brand of hot sauce. I got a girlfriend and former coworker who's from California. She swears by this stuff. It says four dashes. I'll show you guys what we have with the wine and the lemon. So we've got a nice little bath going in there. Don't want to spill it on you. Woo! The wine smells good. So four dashes of hot sauce. Oh, I keep forgetting. One, two, three, four. It might have been a little heavy. And then salt and pepper. So we got our hot sauce in the middle. I'm gonna stir it up. Stir it up. Salt. Stir and reduce the heat to low. All right. So this is what we've got. Shrimp, wine, hot sauce onion, garlic, lemon. So let's stir it up. It smells good. Y'all, look who's here. Welcome Snuggles to class. Hello, some Toonie 6. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome Snuggles, always with the compliments. What am I doing wrong now, Snuggles? The first time my equipment was no good. Now you're talking about my blood pressure. All right. Mom said, taste the food. So the shrimp is done. I'm going to taste one. 
and see seasoning and everything then I'm gonna quickly cook my pasta and then we're done I'll try and get a small one or maybe not haha <laughs> All right, so I have a little shrimpy. Mmm! Woo! The hot sauce, the lemon, the wine. Look at Snuggles. Snuggles wants me to drop the link, y'all. Every time you come, you remind me of our cook along and our Maggie meetup. Okay, so Marcus's pasta is done. I think I'm going to serve the kid. Let's see what it says. Throw the angel hair pasta. Oh, I've already done the pasta. Add the pasta and toss. So you're supposed to add the pasta in here. Do I want to do that? Because I've got my pasta. Ah, decisions, decisions. Let me get... Okay. I will throw his pasta in there. Maybe I should separate it. I think that's what I should do. Here we go. Y'all know Snuggles. Snuggles is everywhere. So I'm just gonna put water in this pot to do my cauliflower pasta. And then we'll do a quick little announcement and I think I'm gonna go ahead and feed the kid while I'm cooking mine. Always feed the family first. Sometimes I eat, sometimes I don't. All right, so we're just going to boil some water. All right, so what did you say? Snuggles is the aunt or uncle. Nobody knows. Snuggles is the aunt or uncle that comes to the family barbecue, and you just got to love them no matter what. Snuggles, we love you. You are part of our uh, family. Even though you come in and tell me everything I'm doing wrong, but I believe Snuggles is going to come through. turn this off clean up pack up my lemon toss this in the fridge I'm going to separate half since this is a shrimp scampi you're supposed to toss it all together so I'll take out half for me oh okay it says you get the kid ready Add the pasta in here. Add water, the pasta water, if it needs to be thinned. I don't think it does. Taste it. Add salt and pepper if needed. Then you top with the Parmesan and minced parsley. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? Oh my gosh. All right. Let me um, get Marcus's plate while mine is cooking. And I'll microwave this asparagus. Not as good as freshly grilled, but it's fine. All right, my pasta will cook in three minutes. Let me get his plate. All right, so I'll show you guys what we have before I half it because the instructions say to toss the uh, pasta in here. So I have the shrimp with the butter sauce and the garlic and everything. And then I have real pasta for the kid. And mom is having cauliflower pasta. So I don't want to toss it all in there. So I'm going to take half out for myself. We'll give the kid the full experience. All right but it's looking good and that's good because um, I cooked a pound of shrimp so he'll get half and I'll get half. I usually eat about eight ounces of protein 
per meal. Let me get a little bit of the broth. And I'll show you guys what I'm doing. The things you have to go through, but it's okay. All right. So I, I took some out for me, just some shrimp and some broth. When my pasta is ready, I'll toss that. Toss it in that. All right. So for the kid, I left half in here for him. Just draining his pasta so it didn't overcook. We've got a nice, this is spaghetti. It's supposed to be angel hair, but look, <laughs> he will be fine. All right. So we're going to mix all this together. It says taste for mix and then taste for seasoning. So we'll do, I already tasted it. I think it's fine, but I'll just coat this in here. You guys can see it's coming together, coming together. Um, Top with grated Parmesan and minced parsley and serve immediately. So remember, I'm doing the manchego. If you have the uh, grated Parmesan, you can, but I'm going to give a healthy pinch of this. It's melting into the pasta. So we've got the cheese, cheese please, and some fresh parsley that I grated. And I'm going to plate it for him. All right. Now let me serve on a plate. Reading on my water. All right. So let's see. Y'all know I'm big on presentation. Let's see if we can get this nice. Trying to put the pasta on the bottom and the shrimp. It's a little, um, I won't say watery, but the, the scampi is like a garlic butter sauce. It looks good, y'all. I'm going to show you. And I'm going to do just a little bit of fresh parsley just for color and clean the plate for presentation all right a little bit more green I'm gonna call him and take a picture let him taste it for you I think it looks good all right picture. Let me plug that one in. Marcus. Okay. I hear the heavy feet coming y'all. They always hear you when it's time for food. All right. Sorry. I had to plug you up. Oh, my water is boiling almost. All right. I'll show you guys his plate. I should put some asparagus on the side for him. Marcus, dinner is ready. All right, I'm gonna take a picture. If you would uh, taste and let everybody know, say hey to the scholars. Sorry, just trying to take a picture. All right. Did you fall asleep? Yeah, okay. So seven, I'm sorry, the pink one. All right. It looks good. Here comes the teenager. And I put a little bit of asparagus on the side. Nana, what do you think? We're going to let Marcus eat. Ah, I need to make my pasta. 
All right, let them know how it is. All right, I'm gonna toss my, so my water is boiling. How is it? Nana's on. Oh, thank you. Can you say anything about it? How does it taste? I haven't had mine yet. You taste the garlic? You taste the lemon? Mm -hmm. All right, so this is my cauliflower pasta. So I'm putting this in here. I'm gonna cook the whole thing. So this is what I'm having. It says, add the cauliflower pasta to boiling water, stir to loosen. Cook for three minutes. Y'all see? <sighs> All right, I'm waiting for mine and then we'll do our chat and chow. We'll talk about our meetup, our in-person meetup, our virtual meetup. Um, I've got the timer on for three minutes. Let me just clean up and I think I'll make a beverage. <laughs> We'll see. You need any pepper, red pepper flake, or anything? No. No? It's good. I'm sorry? It's good. It's good? Can you say anything else about it? It tastes like pasta. It tastes like pasta. All right. Mine is almost done. I'm doing the exact three minutes like it says, and then I'm going to plate mine. How much is in here? Okay, so it's a lot. So I only need one and a third cup. So there's two and a half servings in there. So let me get my plate. So I have a plate for me, just for me. How's the pasta? Is the pasta cooked well? Yeah. Do you see why I love you all so much? Thank you for being here. All right, almost done. It's counting down 40 something seconds and we're gonna take the cauliflower pasta out. I'm just cleaning up. All right. So I have my shrimp here, still warm. Just clean it up so I can pull up a chair and eat with y'all. Got a rolling boil. All right, just packing up my cheese wheel. All right, so our cauliflower pasta is done. Yeah, I know, I do. I have a young man. 
wait till you see Alex. He will give you all the detail, but that's what I got and I'm grateful. All right. So, got our cauliflower pasta. I'll show you guys what I have. You okay? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, let me show you. You want more? No. That was for me. All right, I don't need that much. So I'm gonna toss it. I've got my shrimp scampi here. Just a little bit, I don't need that much. All right, so I'm gonna pour the rest of the cauliflower into this drain and rinse so it can stop cooking. Hopefully it works like pasta. So y'all can see it's kind of like a clearer kind of noodle. We'll see how it performs. All right, so let's toss it in here with our shrimp. And the rest of the manchego, which is my Parmesan um, substitute. How did you like the cheese? Could you taste the cheese at all? Yeah, it tastes good. Yeah, it tastes good? All right. So I have my cheese in here. And the parsley. I'm just going to toss. Now I'm gonna put it on my plate. Are you sure you're full? Yeah. Cause you can have some of mine. You want some more? No. Okay. I'm working on my presentation. Almost done. All right. Let me clean the plate. It's a little drippy, but you know, shrimp scampi is like a garlic butter wine sauce. Let's scrape up the rest of the parsley. And the rest of the asparagus in honor of Condemnia. Do you want... And just to be extra festive, I'm going to do just a little bit. Give it that Olive Garden touch. Tell me when. <laughs> All right. Dinner's ready. Looks great. Okay, so we're gonna taste. I'm gonna make a beverage and I'm gonna bring you guys down. And I actually will eat my food. I only eat twice a day and I only eat when I live stream for y'all. Miss Glogo, whatever you like, you got it. I'm gonna have a soda. Eh, I'm not a root beer, but this is a multi-pack Zevia. If you struggle with the soda, they have some options. Oh. Let me take a picture of this before the Parmesan melts down. Cauliflower noodles, 
asparagus, shrimp scampi, um, gluten-free, sugar-free, dairy-free. Monique, OMG, okay. You like it? Looks good? Which one is that? All right. So we're gonna eat together, it looks good? Okay. Let me get a glass of ice. Nana, I ordered your alkaline drops. I put them in everything, turns tap water into alkaline water. So you stay better hydrated, or that's what happened to me. I'm not a doctor. Even though this is root beer, all the flavors are clear. Zero sugar, zero calories, sweetened with stevia. So you got your plant-based natural sweetener. And dinner for you, dinner for you, Instagram, dinner for you, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Q4 says a restaurant house. That was mom's, um, did you know that was Nana's dream? Uh, a restaurant? All right, so presentation is good. Let's uh, give it a try. Let's see how those cauliflower noodles are. I'm excited. Can you please bring my chair? If not, I'll get it. So a little bit of cauliflower noodle. <sighs> Proper etiquette with pasta, y'all. You're supposed to get a little bit and then twirl it on the plate. I'm going to get one shrimp. <sighs> I'm really not a pasta person, but I wanted to try this. It should be smaller than this. Wait a minute. I like. I will say this. Let me bring y'all down. All right. This is the uh, apron. Y'all can see the texture. All right. So let me bring you guys down. Let me bring Instagram down. Here I come. Y'all know it's just me and my iPad. Excuse me, I should go blow my nose. Allergy season. All right. So it's very, very good. The cauliflower pasta. Great pasta texture. It's giving me the cauliflower experience. You can see if you compared it to Marcus's noodles, you know, regular wheat pasta or, you know, uh, flour pasta is probably more yellow. This is like a white ish color um sticks to the sauce really well gives you the pasta chew the flavor is a little light which is fine because it's a vegetable um so you know when you eat pasta it kind of tastes like a grain this is not that it doesn't give you that pasta taste but it's soaking up flavor of the scampi sauce very nicely i would definitely recommend the Kali Power Pasta. Mm. Mm. The shrimp is excellent. Supposed to twirl in a spoon? Yeah. I'm working on it, y'all. I'm going to get there one day, but yeah, Leanne is right. Hold a spoon in the other hand, get your pasta, and then twirl it in the base of a spoon. <sighs> I do what I can. But um, yeah, really good. Actually, it doesn't take long at all. Um, the sauce is pretty easy. 
love the shrimp. I would eat just the shrimp with the asparagus. But it's good. The shrimp has got a nice, like, lemony. Um, it's a bright. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm. Mm. It's very citrus forward, which is fine for me. I like lemon. If you don't like lemon or not as much lemon, maybe juice one lemon and not two because you definitely get that bright citrus when you bite down on the shrimp. For me, it's fine, but you know, whatever you like, but it's excellent. Let me see how the asparagus does on day two. All right, so Snuggles is here. Let's talk about our Maggie meetups. <sighs> Y'all, here we go. <sighs> ah, Marcus, Nana says you want to put the hot pepper on your food? Does she talk? No. No? He had some for lunch today, Mom. Nana makes a very, uh, like a fried pepper. All done? Okay. Can I see your plate? Notice what's left? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Thank you. So mom, he had rice and shita already. So Snuggles is here, giving me all the compliments that he or she does. Let's talk about the Maggie meetup. Hey, Tabitha, so good to see you. So if you're in the Atlanta area or want to come to the Atlanta area, I am having a Maggie meetup for the scholars Thursday, May 26th. It is the Thursday before Memorial Day weekend, but we are going to the Cook's Warehouse. Um, it should be posted on my community tab if you scroll down a little bit. And we're going to do a joint cooking class. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shrimp is great. So um, the Cook's Warehouse is a kitchen store, kind of like a, a Williams Sonoma. It's open to the public. <clears throat> so in the front, they have all this cookware and fancy, you know, gadgets. But in the back, they have like an open kitchen where they do kitchen, where they do cooking classes. I've done this for work. I'm a former Coca-Cola executive. So we had um, a team event there. It was amazing. So one of my scholars asked for a Maggie meetup. So I picked this. Now, I know some people have said the price point is a bit much. So please let me know what price point would work for you all. But it's $99. And it is for three hours from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. Everything is included. The food, the wine. Uh, we're going to cook. We have a chef that's assigned to the group. So kind of like a paint and sip class where the chef is in front telling us every step of the way. So we actually make our own food. They give you your apron. They give you all the ingredients. You cook together. Then when the knives are put away, then we will drink our wine. The wine is included. And then we sit down and eat the food that we made. And I chose this based on the menu. You can go on their website. The $99 is the same price for anybody coming off the street. And you would re register at cookswarehouse.com. And I saw this one and it was called gluten-free comfort food. So the menu is fried chicken. Well, I know you like fried chicken. Fried chicken, macaroni and cheese, and cream cake with berries. So it's got rave reviews. They said you won't even know that it's gluten-free. If I told you this was uh, sugar-free, dairy-free, and gluten-free, you might not believe it either. Like Crystal Light said, I make delicious food with a healthy twist. Um, so that's the one that I chose. Um, so we've got a few people that are uh, ready to go. If you decide that you would like to go, let me know. Um, it's open to the public. I think there's 16 spaces. If we have enough people that want to go, they'll make it a private event for us, but that's not required. If the menu is something that you don't eat, I know someone said that they were a vegan. You can still come through and say hello. Um, what else? Um, 
Thank you, Snuggles. Thank you for the for the love. So that's the last weekend of the month. If you want to kick off Memorial Day weekend, hey Darcy, good to see you. If you want to kick off Memorial Day weekend, you're welcome to come and do the uh, joint cooking class at the Cook's Warehouse. It's on Piedmont Road in Atlanta. But I know some people, you know, are out of town and they can't come. So we're going to do a virtual Maggie meetup after the cook along. So the first weekend in June, we're going to do a lunch and learn. So Snuggles, I'm looking at you. I don't know how many calories it is. I don't count calories or carbs or any of that stuff. I just work on my list of approved foods. And if it's on my list, I eat it. Um, if it's not on my list, I try to avoid it. But uh, I eat two meals a day. And to me, they're pretty big. But um, I don't know. I don't count calories. And I asked my metabolic specialist and she was like, no, she doesn't count calories for me either. But look, I support everybody doing what works for them. I've done Weight Watchers. I've done Nutrisystem. All of it works. Uh, the problem is if you don't like the food, you'll suffer through it to lose the weight. And then as soon as you get to your goal and you go back to your old way of eating, we all know what happens, right? I've been there with the up and down. So for me, I know I have to eat this way for the rest of my life. And I accept that and I actually enjoy it. Shrimp scampi with cauliflower pasta and asparagus. So I try to save my, my indulgences for vacations and splurging, but I don't count calories. Okay, so back to the virtual meetup. It'll be the first weekend in June. We're going to do a lunch and learn. Hey, Lisa. If you're not in Atlanta and you want to get together with the rest of the scholars, you all have named yourselves Maggie Scholars, then you bring whatever you want to eat. It could be a drink. It could be a snack. It could be a plate. And Snuggles, I will drop the link. And um, I would hope that you guys, you know, whoever wants to come, I'll put together a little evite. But uh, I would hope that um, if you want to uh, meet the rest of the scholars, it'd be a great opportunity. Not a live stream, not, you know, broadcast, but just, um, there you go, Snuggles. Just for those who want to get to know each other face to face. Um, I'm not going to say you have to cam up, but it'll be an opportunity just to say, hey, what brought you here? What have you tried? What have you learned? We'll just fellowship together virtually over food because we all eat snuggles do you eat are you real <laughs> mm -hmm. excellent i feel myself getting full i'm really pleased with this cauliflower i'm sorry yeah with the cauliflower pasta for anyone who just joined shrimp scampi but this is the cauliflower power cauliflower linguine. Since this is a white wine and butter sauce, the sauce is already kind of mild, which is fine. I would like to try this with a nice like red sauce, like a ragu that has like, you know, Italian seasoning and, you know, stewed tomatoes and all that. I think it would really pick up the flavor well. It's mild, but I do like it. So what questions do you guys have? I'm going to scroll back while I eat my dinner. Um, I made this for Marcus on regular pasta. He said it was good. It tasted like pasta. Um, his plate was pretty clear, so that's a good sign. And then for me on cauliflower pasta. Mm. All right. Q4 wants to know. Great question. Q4 is asking Maggie, do you or will you share your list of approved foods on your community tab? I can definitely put that up there for you. I have done some videos. So Q4, if you look back, Maggie the substitute teacher is only three months old, but I do stream twice a day because I eat twice a day and you guys are holding me accountable because I only eat when I live stream for you till I get the rest of this weight off. Um, I actually did some videos on my food sensitivity results, but I broke them up into categories. So I have like a fruit video, a vegetable video, a meat video, um, 
but I can definitely, it's this, um, paper that's on the fridge, <clears throat> but yeah, I'll share it. Now I'll tell you this. Hmm. Sorry, that's not elegant. This is year three for me. I've been on this journey. I saw the metabolic specialist in 2020. The pandemic reset was actually wonderful for me. I'm just like y'all. I had the big, you know, corporate job with the long commute and ripping and running between the kids and two different schools. You know, their dad, I co-parent great with him, amicably divorced. He's in the area, but during the week, you know, getting the kids where they need to be, two hours on the road, um, just too tired or too hungry to care, going through the drive-through. You, you all know how it is. So when the pandemic happened and they sent us home for two weeks to sit this thing out, you know, I made a decision. I was kind of like, well, I can just kind of let it go and it can get worse from here. Or I can use this time and access, aw, thank you, Q4. Um, use this access to the kitchen to make some choices. So when I first went to see the metabolic specialist, you know, like I said, I had all these issues that I thought was just getting older. I had horrible joint pain. I would wake up in the, in the morning and limp my way to the bathroom. After the long commute, limp out of the car. I had that knee that you had to just shake out. And again, I thought I was just getting older. Excuse me. Um, so when I got my test results, like I said, I was shocked because I had the standard American diet, like we all do, for the first, you know, 43 years. And like I said, when I got my test results and it was stuff that I was eating all of the time, trying to be healthy, I couldn't believe it. Now, I had never heard of this gut health thing and, you know, metabolic uh, specialist and inflammation. I didn't know what any of that was. I was just trying to lose the weight. So when she gave me my test results, I was like, you know what? I haven't tried this before. I've tried everything else. So I decided I'm going to go, you know, pretty cold turkey. So I cleared out a shelf in the fridge. I actually labeled it mom's shelf. And I just went and bought all the stuff that was on my list. I'll show you. Now, I know this is black and white. Okay. It's kind of hard to see, but it's color-coded, mild, moderate, or severe, severe reaction. And you can see there are some things that light up the list. You know, a big one for me, dairy. I'm sensitive to lobster. So, like I said, this is my third year of getting tested, and I'm going to finish it out this year. The good news is... Things that were originally on my list have started to fall off. Now I can incorporate chicken. I can have coffee. Um, you know, some things that were on there before now have fallen off, meaning I can tolerate them. So, excuse me, one of the things that I realized is, you know, and I've said this before, but I know we've got some new people here, so welcome. And if you found me on Lead Attorney, thank you so much. I am a student of his course. He's very generous with his knowledge, and um, I'm figuring this out as I go. Ooh, I haven't tried sugar-free log cabin syrup, but uh, I have had sugar-free. All the syrups that I have are sugar-free. Give it a try. I haven't tried that one, though. Y'all, and I'm not a doctor, right? It's just me. I'm just a mom and a home cook. Just trying to do the best that I can. And what I found out is there are some foods that we eat that your body processes really well and you're just humming along like a race car everything's firing you feel great and then there are some foods that you eat that your body does not process well they just kind of hang around you're trying to push through it but you don't know it's making you sick and you just keep eating it and so like i said you know for me i was eating citrus every day i was eating chicken all the time thank you snuggles um, I was drinking milk, yogurt, cheese, all of that stuff, trying to make healthy choices. And when I got my test results and I saw that stuff, I was like, my goodness, because for me, it was joint pain. 
And um, I just hated being like, I was like, I'm older, but I'm not old. I hated being that one that was always pulling up the, the rear, limping along, because I want to stay active, running behind these boys. But um, there's so much stuff that some of us struggle with. It could be really bad eczema. It could be you get migraines and you don't know why. It could be... Um, you know, bloating. It could be weight gain. For me, it was joint pain. It could be you can't sleep. It, it, all this stuff that you just think, you know, I'm just getting older. I just have this thing. So I tested it. Um, I've told this story before, but I'll share it again. I'm not a doctor. I just play one on TV. Y'all don't even play one on TV. I am not a doctor. I'm just sharing what worked for me, but I love this community because we share with each other. So I went to see the metabolic specialist in January 2020 before everything shut down. And like I said, she took one look at me and she said, you're not really that big. Your frame is not big. You're not big bone. You're not plus size. You're not any of that. You just have a lot of inflammation. And nobody had told me that before. I was like, inflammation, what is that? What I just told you. Your body is struggling to process this stuff and it's just not working. And you're just dealing with the side effects and you keep eating the same stuff. So I got my test results and I'm like, what the heck am I supposed to eat? I eat this stuff all the time. That's where the substitutions came in. So like I said, I tested it. I started in January and like I told you, I had really bad joint pain. Excuse me. I should have cut the parsley a little bit smaller. It's a little bit bigger than I like, but, um, I had really bad joint pain. I was taking two, four, six, eight, ten 10 Tylenol a day and then starting to look for something stronger. It really scared me because I'm like, this is not who I am. I went on the, I call it an elimination diet, which means I eliminated all the stuff that was on my no-no list and substituted it with stuff that was okay for me to eat. Within 48 hours of starting this plan, you haven't lost any weight in two days. I'll never forget, you know, like we all do, get up in the morning, where's the first place that you go? To the restroom. And I just had gotten used to getting up and kind of limping my way into the bathroom. I got up after 48 hours and I'm just walking to the bathroom like I move around this kitchen now. And I got to the bathroom and I was like, I'm not limping. I thought my mind was playing tricks on me. So I'm like, okay, still didn't really believe it. So I stayed on track all of January and uh, I had probably lost about 10 pounds. You know, in the beginning, it's just water weight. It's easy when you start something, right? It comes off fast in the beginning. So I'm like, okay, doing my thing. Here comes February. I told the metabolic specialist, I was like, look, we got a Valentine's Day cruise planned. Pay. I am going. Of course, this was before everything shut down. And I said, I want to go and I want to enjoy myself. She said, go have a great time. We'll get back on this when you come back. And I thought that was interesting because I'm like, she seems a little too eager for me to go have a great time. So I did. It was just a little weekend getaway. I ate everything. Full sugar pancakes, real syrup, um, chocolate, cupcakes, the bread basket. I ate everything. The second day of the cruise, I woke up. Everything that had gone away was back. My knee, it was so like swollen. I couldn't even like bend it well. I had to like massage it. It hurt. I'm limping to the bathroom again first thing in the morning. I was like, okay. It really is the food. So long-winded version of, like I always say, you know, every time you've lost weight, people are like, oh, what did you do? How long did it take? What did you do? How long did it take? For me, this is about health, and we all know how important health is. This is the only shot we get. Excuse me. Um, so I eat to stay healthy. All of the little upticks that I had in blood sugar and blood pressure and cholesterol are all normal now without any medication. So I like to find creative ways to eat food 
that I have to eat in a way that I want to eat. So Q4, yes, I will post my results and maybe I'll post the first ones for you. Mm. Mona says, you're gonna make chicken scampi with that or another plant-based noodle. Yes, yeah, zucchini noodles. Zoodles are great. For me, they're just a little delicate, but um, I love like zucchini squash and yellow squash as a noodle substitute. Excellent. Almost done, then I gotta eat my veggies. I can hear Nana telling me, yay, your vegetables. So yeah. Mm. Shout out to the channel sponsors. Completely optional. Some of you all have asked how to support the channel. I'm not yet monetized, but we're on our way. I do have a cash app. It's dollar sign M Brown. Oh, we got some new channel sponsors in the house. Lisa's a channel sponsor. I need to update my slide. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Let me know if I'm missing anybody. I try to keep up with this. You guys are so gracious to me. You don't even have to be here, but the fact that you continue to come and watch me cook, I appreciate it. There's the Cash App, PayPal, Venmo, and Zelle. What other questions do y'all have? I'm almost done. Um, but yes, Q4, I will definitely post my results. But here's the thing. It has been wildly informative for me. I say do what works for you. I'm seeing a metabolic specialist, so I got the test done in her office. And so it's part of a plan. You know, I can go in for support. I know I needed to hire someone to help me. If I could have done it by myself, I would have. But clearly, you know, <laughs> I need help. Mm. Um. So it is an investment, but for me, I feel amazing. My health is worth everything. So I used my HSA to pay for my test and seeing the metabolic specialist. So if you don't have that option, there's a mail-in service called Everly Well. Everly Well is um, a blood test. So they mail you a kit to your home, then you have to do the little finger stick and you can squeeze onto the little card that they send you. <clears throat> mm, yes, cauliflower noodles, absolutely. These came from Walmart, Cali Power. So these came from Walmart, but you can check grocery stores in your area. Uh, I've seen them at Whole Foods. A lot of times you can go to like CaliPower.com and they usually have something like a store locator and you can put in your zip code and it'll tell you where you can find some of these ingredients. And I'm also going to put together, I learned this from lead attorney. I'm just going to go ahead and put together a Google doc. Whenever I come across stuff like this, and it's like, Oh, people are always asking me like, where did you get that? I'm just going to put together a Google doc with one link so that you guys can click on that. And you can see the stuff that I found. Cause this channel is really like a lot of me sharing some of the stuff that I found that makes uh, the substitutions easier. Um, there's some stuff that's not good, but even like the, hey, Marcus, if I told you that was sheep's milk cheese, what would you say? That's weird. But you see, he ate it like Parmesan. Can't have cow dairy and I didn't have Parmesan, so that's my substitute. So back to the blood test. If you want to do that, that one's about 100, 119. Finger stick, you put it on the card, you mail it back to them. They send you a whole little kit with the prepaid label. And um, you get your test results back, I guess, an email. So that's Everly Well. And then, so that's option number two. And then option number three, some people can get a full nutrition panel at their doctor. So if that's covered under your insurance, you can ask. If you're curious about your sensitivities, you can ask your doctor if they can do a full nutrition panel. You know, it'll give you information 
and it may kind of answer some questions like, why do I always feel this way when I eat something? You know, you just continue to eat it because you don't know, you know, um, I am not the food police. Y'all know when I'm on vacation, I like to enjoy myself. But at least I go into it now saying, I'm going to have this. It is Mother's Day. Y'all, I had two English muffins on Mother's Day with butter, real goat's butter, real cream cheese, real jelly or preserves. I got this little brunch box. It was excellent. But at least when I eat off of my plan now, I'm intentional. And I know, okay, probably not going to feel too good tomorrow, but I'm going to enjoy this. And then it kind of helps me get right back on my plan because I can't sustain eating that way um, because before I know it, all that other stuff is going to come back. Almost done. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, so yeah. So tomorrow is Friday. Um, what do y'all want to do? Should we do, I do Maggie cakes like once a week. Um, Do you all want to do, what do y'all want for breakfast tomorrow? I stream twice a day and Bill asked for chicken and waffles. So we did that today. Any requests? I love the challenge of coming up with uh, substitutions. I can do the Maggie cakes, which are blueberry pancakes. I know lead attorney makes fun of me, but everything I make is sugar-free, gluten-free and uh, dairy free and if i had put this plate in front of you you would have eaten it mmm leanne whoo eggs benedict let's see so i need to make a hollandaise sauce poached egg is that poached egg canadian bacon hollandaise sauce is that eggs benedict and holiday sauce is like a mayonnaise base. I think so. Is that what that is? I've never made it before. But I can give it a try. Come on. All done. All right. I will look to see if I can find an Eggs Benedict Miss Globe Girl, can I have any kind of porridge? Oh, man, I wish. My mom makes the best rice porridge. We grew up on that stuff. I used to eat oatmeal every day, but I'm gluten sensitive. Right now, I'm in weight loss mode, so I'm really trying to get the rest of this weight off. So I'm trying to be very strict about what I eat. Once I get to my goal, which I'm like 20, 25 pounds away, I'll you know, experiment with a few things like that. I'm trying to think what kind of porridge I, no grits. I make all that stuff. Grits, oatmeal. Mm -mm. I can't think of anything that I could substitute, but I'll ask. All right. So Leanne says you've always wanted to make eggs Benedict. Never found a good recipe. Okay, I will look. The only thing is I need to substitute the English muffins. Oh, there is something that I want to try, y'all. I saw a recipe for a bread, like a flour bread. It's just made with like egg whites. Bulgur, just loves Jesus. Um, Bulgur is a type of wheat, right? And if I'm gluten sensitive, I don't think I can have it. Ah, Miss Dees, thank you so much for being here. I'm so glad you like shrimp scampi. It's all gone. My plate and the kids' plate. But uh, as soon as we're done, we're, we're just about done. We're talking about breakfast tomorrow. Um, I will post the pictures on Instagram and on um, my YouTube community tab. So it was a butter and white wine garlic uh, shrimp. Excellent. But I used this for my pasta substitute, Kali Power Impostable. Um, and it was good. Really good pasta texture. Taste was kind of bland. So I would just do it, the pasta taste. The shrimp was excellent. Um, but this white sauce is very light. So it was just a very light meal. All right. I will look, Leanne. Um, 
I think you, I think I'm going to make that cloud bread tomorrow. That may be the morning though. Yeah. I got an idea. It may be a fried egg sandwich tomorrow. Cause I got a, a bread recipe that I want to try, which is just egg whites, cream of tartar. I got to find that. And, um, yeah. So y'all, I don't want to keep you. I think we are good here. I'm going to clean up, check homework. Cause y'all know how they do when they think you're distracted. I appreciate you all being here so much. Thank you for helping the channel grow. Whatever brought you to me, if you love to eat, if you love to cook, if you just need some ideas to cook for you, to cook for the family, if you've got weight to lose, if you've got health challenges, I'm just happy that you all are here. I love the community. Shout out to my scholars, even Snuggles. Um, take a look at the community tab. And I'll probably cook tomorrow. Got a couple things in the morning. We'll see. Maybe 10-ish, but I'll always try to schedule it. So hopefully you guys get notifications if you click the bell or tap the thing. Y'all know. Ah, oh, big bad bull. You did miss it. Oh, I'm so sorry. We we're wrapping up another channel sponsor, but it was good. Pictures are coming up. Shrimp scampi, cauliflower pasta. All right. Instagram, thank you so much. Good night. See you tomorrow. And um, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, thank you for being here. Even Snuggles. You all, you all know Snuggles. We love you. Snuggles has promised, y'all, if I uh, do the virtual meetup. No, Snuggles actually got his or her feelings hurt when I cooked for Amethyst. She helped me with my Amazon links. And I had her come to the house. She's in the Atlanta area. And she wanted arroz con pollo, which is a Latin chicken and rice. It's uh, last week, so you guys can find it. Snuggle said his or her feelings were hurt that he or she thought I loved Amethyst more. So I said, Snuggles, if you come over, I will cook for you. Nothing goes viral here, but I think if Snuggles comes and I cook for Snuggles, I think that would be your viral Maggie moment. All right, you guys, thank you so much for being here. Um, good night, and I'll see you tomorrow for uh, cloud bread. We'll try something new. All right, Twitter, 